good time, as they say, uh, wherever you are. Uh, you're, I know people join us from all over the world. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome this very distinguished panelist. Uh, uh, it began, the idea for this conference began uh, when I saw and uh, began to read the collected volume of uh, Sani Yarshater's Yad Dashtra uh, that Dr. Zandion had compiled. That book is now available for uh, purchase. I strongly urge you to purchase this, not only because it's a beautiful prose by a master prose uh, about some of the most important cultural developments of our time, but that's also how these books uh, continue to be published. Uh, they need to be purchased and they need to be uh, supported. Uh, so um, uh, how you can order the book is on our website and you can go to that link. Uh, there are a few people that I want to thank before I turn it over to our panelists. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank, I know maybe uh, Ms. Aframi will do it, but as an Iranian, as someone interested in Iran's culture and history, I want to thank Princess Ashraf Pahlavi uh, for being the first and so far the only member of the royal family to support uh, a cultural endeavor of this magnitude. Without her generosity, Iran Nameh would not have been possible. Without Mahnaz Afghani's managerial brilliance, uh, the endowment would not have been created, but her generosity was singular. Secondly, the people who supported Iran Shanasi, whose name never appears on the papers of uh, Iran Shanasi, they deserve, I think, our praise. They include Dr. Montazri uh, and Dr. Mr. Khayyami, and I think Ahmed Qureshi. Ahmed Qureshi, for the entire duration of Iran Shanasi, was behind the scene, his uh, master su support. And then finally, I, I want to tip my hat and say thank you to uh, Dr. Jalal and Matini. Uh, with the help of Mahmoud Aframi and the other people that I mentioned, Jalal and Matini went on to edit two of the three most important journals published in Iranian diaspora in the last century. That is a remarkable feat to do. And it is the only two journals supported entirely by the Iranian American community or Iranian community at large. Uh, Kave, which is the other one, was supported by Germany. So these two journals, is, in their brilliance, owe not only a great deal to the people I mentioned, but also to Jalal Matini. We should have had him here. Unfortunately, he is not uh, feeling well, but I send him my best wishes. And I welcome Mahnaz Aframi to tell us about the foundation and how it all began. And thank you all for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much, Abbas Jan, for, uh, for your wonderful introduction and uh, for your kind comments. And uh, uh, I'm uh, very, very um, glad to be here, particularly at the, at the uh, Stanford seminars, talking about uh, Yad Dashtal uh, and uh, about Ehsan Yashota's uh, impact on the foundation, which is uh, seldom recognized uh, even by those who were very closely involved with the foundation. Uh, the uh, subject of the uh, conversation is the connection between Ehsan and, uh, and the foundation. And uh, I would like to take up uh, Ehsan's own uh, methodology in writing uh, the, his diaries, his intellectual diaries, the Yad Dashtar that is connecting the personal uh, to the formal and uh, uh, in, uh, the professional. Uh, is the, the, is the, so I'll starting with that, I will say that I have known uh, Ehsan uh, almost all of my life um, since I was a child. Uh, he was a good friend of my mother who was one of the three women who first attended university in Iran. And that is where she uh, met Ehsan and became friends with him. And of course, later the family connection continued uh, with uh, his sister and family with ours. And uh, Ehsan uh, was actually the first person who introduced me to uh, reading and to literature. I was a child actually in, in 
grammar school, but he gave me books that were mind boggling for a child of my age, but they came from different countries, War and Peace, uh, uh, Gone with the Wind, whatever. And uh, it, it was difficult to quite follow uh, these books in translation, but it, what it did is it pressured my uh, mental capacities to understand other ways of living and other ways of uh, expressing yourself and, and uh, making decisions. So uh, this was uh, the, the, the first. And uh, the uh, second thing that was even possibly more important uh, was when I was uh, an adolescent going to school in America, uh, and finishing high school, I wrote to him and uh, discussed with him that I would like to go be a doctor. And of course, at that time, any young Iranian in outside the country were, had to be either an engineer or a doctor. And uh, thank heavens I had a son who wrote to me and said, are you crazy? You are not that kind of person. You're not into sciences. You are a literary uh, fan and uh, and uh, what I would suggest is English literature because it is both the field that you would do well in and also you love and and at the same time English literature studied in English speaking countries has very few uh, any at all uh, in Iran right now I think later I found out that there was uh, only Dr. Surat Gara at Tehran University who had actually uh, done that. So this was beautiful because it made me have a much happier life and uh, also uh, the, do what I like to do. And it led to other decisions that were also very helpful. So this is the personal um, piece, uh, but the, where the personal and the professional uh, become connected is after the revolution because before it of course we had connections we saw each other in uh, you know gatherings and so forth but it was after the revolution as an exile in new york that uh, that i had a considerable connection and advice from uh, Esan. and uh, he encouraged me to start uh, some institution or organization that would use my uh, experience in management before and also will be very welcome in with a group of diaspora uh, who are all at odds with each other. Uh, all of them have lost so much. Uh, all of them have had people imprisoned or, or uh, worse. And uh, they all <laughs> seem the various groups uh, blame each other for what has happened. Uh, and uh, what we need is a voice and a place uh, that would be safe for all groups, all backgrounds, and also can use the extraordinary possibilities that the diaspora have in, in uh, uh, this uh, uh, time, because most of them, they're in intellectuals, scholars, managers, high level uh, functionaries in various areas were outside of Iran or were fast coming outside of Iran. And uh, so what they need was to be able uh, to be connected to what the new government was not at all interested in. And that was the pre-Arab conquest Iran, anything having to do with Persia and Persians, and uh, anything to do with the things that Iranians love more than anything, that is the, uh, the ceremonies, the celebrations, the literature, the arts that have to do with their in ancient history. So, uh, so we uh, thought that we would set up an organization and try to have as uh, uh, actually nonpartisan a space as possible uh, to have people express themselves right to do research and so forth. So the first pro project uh, as uh, Esson suggested and the other board members uh, very much supported was creation of the journal Iran Nome. 
And as Abbas mentioned, uh, I already had the good fortune of being a close friend of Ahmad Qureshi, who was the who was a mashadi, like Dr. Madrini, and also uh, he was the chancellor of National University. And uh, actually, we had spent a lot of uh, our lives, my husband and I, with him in Colorado when we were going to university. And uh, so uh, Ahmad has, was a member of the new board, the board of the new organization, and he suggested Dr. Matini uh, for the board. And we already had him on our board, but Ehsan was the one who stressed that he would be the best editor uh, for uh, this kind of journal. And he was absolutely right. Dr. Matini was a, a hugely, uh, knowledgeable and deeply uh, involved with all aspects of Iranian uh, history and literature. And uh, so together we all decided uh, that in order to, uh, to be um, successful with this new journal, which at the, at the time was the only one uh, that existed, uh, that we would be uh, well to stay away from contemporary issues, which would be divisive. So um, uh, I was just looking uh, this morning uh, uh, at the first uh, copy of the journal. Uh, it's a very uh, sort of, I don't have it here with me, but I'll show it to you. It, it, it has, it's about a hundred pages and uh, there is, um, uh, uh, the, the people in it are Safa uh, and uh, Jabadi. Uh, and uh, Dr. Matini himself and Dr. Nas talking about uh, historical periods. Uh, Nas, for instance, talking about Sufism and uh, the others talking about uh, the various aspects uh, of, of uh, uh, older, um, uh, I, I just found it, Jalal Khaled in Mutlaq, Hema Sahai Tarihi wa Dini Dar Ahd Safaviyya is his article. Dr. Matini wrote the longest article on Khiyaban and the word and how it was used. And, and so it was a very, very minimalist uh, journal, starting with these um, uh, scholars and well-known uh, writers. But gradually, of course, Iran Nameh had the support of uh, both Dr. Yashater, who was on the board uh, from then on, uh, and also some of the most uh, uh, well-known uh, scholars of Iranian studies, and it kept growing with wonderful uh, people uh, participating in it. Uh, and at the point when uh, Dr. Matini set up Iran Shenossi, then we had uh, Darim Shaidan working with Ashuri, then we had uh, uh, Meskub working with Hormoz, who was an, another, both of those uh, uh, other extraordinary uh, scholars and, and people, just good people. And uh, then uh, finally with um, uh, Dr. Tarakuli, uh, where the journal was published in Toronto actually, and it became you know, more interesting in terms of images and um, uh, topics, uh, a little bit more uh, cool, let's say. And uh, so uh, all the time though, uh, throughout, uh, Esan wrote for the journal, supported it, uh, participated in board decisions, and was a great uh, help to me personally, because if he said it was okay, then I was sure it was okay, <laughs> everything, whatever the decision was. And uh, Iran Name uh, grew to be a major publication, and uh, the Dr. Matini's effort in the new journal, Iran Shinasi, also and it became an extraordinary uh, uh, effort and very, very uh, useful. And uh, the uh, next uh, uh, project that uh, was very helpful uh, was the oral history uh, program of the foundation. Uh, I had lost a lot uh, myself uh, in the revolution. Uh, I was outside when uh, negotiating with the uh, uh, United Nations to set up 
uh, a global center for training and research on women signing the final documents, legal documents. It took too long. Uh, I mean, the, the UN being what it is, instead of two weeks before which I had come, it took two months. And when I was going to go back, I was told I can't go back. So here I was in the city of New York with one suitcase and not much else. And Esan was there, of course, at uh, Columbia. And uh, it was uh, his uh, support and backing was extraordinarily important. And uh, having lost uh, my notes, my papers, my diaries, everything else, uh, I became passionate about saving what we could. And so the oral history program uh, at uh, Columbia University was basically the, uh, the most of the, the first, uh, the underlying, uh, you know, foundation for other oral history programs elsewhere. And so I, uh, there I got to know Elizabeth Mason, who was the founding chair of the Oral History Association, and Professor Greeley, who was also the head of the department. And they were very helpful in uh, giving us uh, what we needed in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, training. And uh, Elizabeth Mason actually uh, came to, um, to Washington for a week uh, to, uh, to train the uh, oral historians you know, who were going to be uh, involved. And, uh, and it was very interesting. Later she wrote, uh, Elizabeth, who had had so much uh, experience in oral history, because of the level of people who were involved, you know, uh, we were uh, we were in a sense lucky that that we had access to people as we did. For instance, the person who was the overview uh, person for the editing and indexing of uh, the the uh, uh, interviews was Dr. Nasser Yegane, who was the Chief Justice of the United States. Uh, I mean, of Iran. I'm sorry. Uh, and he was in exile, of course, and, and uh, worked with us. Uh, and the others, uh, extraordinary people that under normal circumstances, you wouldn't be able to get Farouk al-Khafwadi, uh, who was the, one of the main forces behind the uh, Shiraz festival, for instance, uh, to art festival to be interviewing people who were involved in the arts. Uh, and others, Yaji Gorgin, for instance, others, uh, politicians, uh, and so forth. Uh, so um, uh, Elizabeth Mason uh, wrote, uh, uh, he says, uh, she says, what a challenge to develop a methodology with scholars of this caliber. What an opportunity to examining and applying oral history theories to recording contemporary political crises. This week I spent in Washington was an extraordinary one. I learned as much as I taught. It was an extraordinary opportunity for us to have, etc. So uh, she she was uh, so impressed with our interviewers and and also with the system. It was just bad luck for our part for our interviewers and ourselves, but it was really good luck for for the program. And of course, um, if it hadn't been for connection to Colombia, where Esan was a well known and uh, respected. Uh, uh, scholar, uh, it might not have happened quite this way. So uh, this, uh, uh, these two were, were uh, major efforts, uh, which uh, we did with his help. But the others was something that he, again, uh, uh, passed on to me, which I think he, he carried out in his own professional life. And that was, don't limit your work to one organization and its parameters. Try to get together with other larger, more uh, capable organizations in each specific area to spread your uh, reach and to get resources uh, that you wouldn't be able to have by yourself. And that was absolutely true because Abbas said that Princess Ashraf uh, who was really passionate about academics and about scholarship, mostly because she never had a chance. She never had a chance to go to college. She wanted to go, but uh, it wasn't possible. I think I see Roma. Am I going over time? <laughs> All right. So, uh, so she gave us two million uh, total. 
but what we were able to do with that was to, to uh, uh, partner with universities such as UCLA, where we set up with very little funding joining UCLA, a program, a special major in Iranian studies. It took a, a ridiculously small amount of money, the two of us, uh, the two organizations together. George Washington, with whom we had the Nowruz lectures, uh, which brought the most uh, well-known Iranian scholars uh, from various parts of the world to give that lecture, which was then uh, published. Uh, and also, uh, of course, with Mesa, where Dr. Yashota uh, uh, participated and moderated our plenaries, both in Persian and in English, and, our, uh, and we became a, a, a member of the organization, uh, uh, MESA's uh, partner organizations. And so these were also what we liked, uh, he was very interested in and helped us with events, with, with establi establishing connections with museums, uh, textile museum, Sackler Gallery, which is now the uh, Iranian, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Asian uh, Museum of Asian or National Museum of Asian Art. So to, to sum it up, the expansion of the work of the, the uh, partnership foundation would not have been possible without taking that view that we partnered with others. We're not uh, specifically uh, uh, ending with, uh, with the organization we have. The last thing that I want to say is that the, uh, his interest in the Yad Dashtar is it's reflected in the Yad Dashtar, is in spreading Persian culture and language in other countries have, which have been part of the Persian uh, world, uh, as uh, uh, among them Tajikistan. And Ahmadi Karimi Hakkak helped us uh, set up a branch of the foundation in Tajikistan to teach Tajik uh, children in Iran, Iran's language, I mean, the Persian language and, and the uh, literature uh, that was, uh, could be available to them. And we provided that uh, with them. And the Tajik scholars came to give, uh, uh, to give speeches and, and uh, conduct events. So this also was an idea that Ehsan reflects in Yad Dashan. There's a lot to talk about, and I'm sorry, I don't want to take more time, but maybe in the questions I can answer some more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Afkami. Um, as we welcome Dr. Zandi, and just a reminder that her talk is in Farsi, but we have an English translation that will be um, linked to in the chat. So hopefully you can follow along and um, welcome Dr. Zandi. Thank you. وقت همگی به خیر سپاسگزارم از مرکز مطالعات ایرانی دانشگاه استنفورد مدیر محترم مرکز آقای دکتر عباس میلانی و همکارانشون خانم روما پرهاد و آقای فرانک و اریکو برای سامان دادن این برنامه و برای فرصتی که به من هم دادی صحبت امروز من در یک نگاه فراگیر درباره شخصیت و جهانبینی استاد احسان یارشاته خواهد بود بازبینی شخصیت چند سویه دکتر یارشاتر ببخشید با نگاهی به کتاب به تازگی منتشر شده یادداشت ها که مجموعه است از متون مستقلی که دکتر یارشاتر در یک بازه زمانی 26 ساله برای نشریات ایران نامه و ایران شناسی نوشتند متونی با موضوعهایی به قایت متنوع که به نظر من از جمله به همین دلیل میتونه چشمندازهای بسیاری باشه به سوی شخصیت چند سویه استاد یارشاتر تنوع موضوعی این یادداشتها که در برگیرنده مطالبی درباره تاریخ، ادبیات یعنی رمان، شعر، خاطر نویسی تا فرش، نقاشی، عکاسی و موسیقی است به نظرم نشان دهنده دید وسیع و ذهن در برگیرنده دکتر یارشاتره. ویژگی های مهم بلکه ضروری برای کسی که سردبیر یک دانشنامه است. از طرف دیگه فکر میکنم بازخانی این یادداشت ها در پس زمینه خودشون فرایند شکل گرفتن یک جامعه فارسی زبان رو در بیرون از جغرافیای متعارف خودش به خاننده نشون میدن. 
تلاش من این خواهد بود که در دقایقی که دارم روی این چند نکته تاکید کنم و از اینجا صحبتم رو با چند اسلاید نشون خواهم داد. یادداشت ها عنوان کتابی است در برگیرنده 164 متن مستقل که دکتر احسان یارشاتر در فاصله سالهای 1365 تا 91 خورشیدی 1986 تا 2012 میلادی برای نشریات ایران نامه و ایران شناسی نوشتند. هر دو این نشریات توسط دکتر جلال متینی بنیاد گذاشته شده بودند و هر دو در بنیاد مطالعات ایران Foundation for Iranian Studies که خانم افغانی توضیح دادند شروع به کار کردند. یادداشت ها همونطور که از عنوانشون پیداست مقاله های دانشگاهی با اون تعریف علمی نیستند. یادداشت هایی هستند درباره هران چه که در فاصله انتشار دو شماره از این نشریات بیشتر مورد توجه دکتر یار شاتر قرار می گرفته و فکر می کنم به همین دلیل تا حدی جهان بینی استاد رو بازتاب میدن که چه مسائلی بیشتر توجه او رو جلب می کرده و اونها رو چگونه یادداشت می کرده. کتاب به پیشنهاد خانم مهناز افغانی مدیرعامل بنیاد مطالعات ایران و با پشتیبانی مالی بنیاد میراث ایرانی پرژن هرتش فاندیشن در 534 صفحه تدوین شده تصویری که میبینیم جلد کتاب روی جلد کتاب کار کوروش بیکپور و همینجا یادآوری میکنم که صفحه آرایی کتاب و ایندکس کتاب کار خانم ژیلا میرافشار در ضمن پس زمینه اسلایت ها هم دست خط دکتر یارشاتر دکتر جلال متینی در متنی که اجازه بازنشرش رو به ما دادند و نخستین متن این کتابه پیشگفتار کتابه در واقع روایت خودشون رو از دعوتشون از دکتر یارشاتر برای نوشتن این یادداشت ها تعریف کردند که به طور خیلی موجز از این قراره که دکتر یارشاتر وقتی که کتاب یا مجله میخواندن در حاشیه های سفید کاغذ یا داشتهایی برمیداشتن به اصطلاح حاشیه نویسی میکردن و دکتر متینی توضیح میدن که گاهی این فاصله ها این فضای سفید کافی نبود و دکتر یارشاتر کاغذی برمیداشتن و ادامه اون حاشیه نویسی رو روی یک کاغذ سفید تکمیل میکردم و اون رو میان صفحات کتاب میگذاشتن. در یک دیدار دوستانه دکتر متینی از دکتر یارشاتر خواهش میکنند که هر موقع فرصت میکنند بعضی از این هاشیه نویسی ها رو تکمیل کنند به شکل یک متن هر چند کوتاه و در اختیار ایران نامه یا ایران شناسی قرار بدن برای چاپ که این اتفاق میفته و دکتر یارشاتر متعهد میمونن برای 26 سال تا زمانی که تقریبا آخرین شماره ایران شناسی منتشر میشه برای این نشریات یادداشت بنویسن در واقع یادداشت ها در شش شماره نخست ایران نامه و از اون به بعد در ایران شناسی چاپ شده بودن بار نخست که نمونه های جلدی رو که میبینیم هم جلد ایران نامه رو مخصوصا شماره های ویژه دکتر یارشاتر و دکتر متینی انتخاب کردم که تصاویرش رو هم داشته باشه با این که خانم افخمی اینجا توضیح کامل درباره بنیاد مطالعات ایران دادند از اونجا که یک صحبت خیلی کوتاهی من دارم در این باره که با کلیت حرف من به نوعی در آمیخته است من اجازه میخوام یک دقیقه وقت بگیرم در این باره بنیاد مطالعات ایران خب دلیل و زمین ساز و پشتیبان چاپ نخست این یادداشت ها در اون دو نشریه بوده همچنین ناشر کتاب یادداشت هاست یعنی دلیل و پشتیبان بازنشر این یادداشت ها هم هست همونطور که خانم افخمی گفتند چون که این بنیاد خیلی زود پا گرفته و خوشبختانه دیر پاییده من فکر میکنم بازخانی فعالیت های فرهنگی بنیاد هم مانند خود کتاب یادداشت ها در واقع روند شکل گرفتن یک جامعه فارسی زبان رو در بیرون از جغرافیا و فرهنگ متعارفش به ما منتقل میکنه این مسئله که ثبت بخشی از تاریخ اجتماعی ماست در دوران بعد از انقلاب اسلامی در بیرون از ایران بیرون از جغرافیای ایران برای من حتما و فکر میکنم برای نسل من ارزش افزوده هم داره چون ما در یک دورانی بزرگ شدیم و درس خوندیم که تلاش های سازمان یافته شده توسط نهاد قدرت که ما دقیقا 
این بخش از تاریخ اجتماعیمون رو یا خیلی مخدوش دریافت کنیم یا اصلا ندونیم در نتیجه من ادای دین و احترام دارم خدمت اعضای ثابت بنیاد خانم مهناز افخمی مدیر عامل بنیاد آقای غلام رضا افخمی مدیر پروژه تاریخ شفاهی و آقای هرمز حکمت که یاد عزیز و شریفشون گرامی باشه که ویراستار ارشد بنیاد مطالعات ایران بودند در اولین بازخانی سلسله یادداشت هایی که در این کتاب هست در ادامه صحبتم درباره ثبت تاریخ اجتماعی توسط همه فعالیت های دیگر بنیاد واقعا تاریخ اجتماعی این دوران به ما منتقل میشه به این دلیل که این که یادداشت ها متون مطبوعاتی هستند در نتیجه دقیقا تاریخ خوردن که در چه زمانی نوشته شدن و چاپ شدن و وقتی که ما اینها رو به شکل سلسله وار بخونیم مثلا متوجه میشیم بخواستین نشریه فارسی زبانی که بعد از انقلاب اسلامی در بیرون از جغرافی های ایران چاپ شده در چه تاریخی در کدام شهر و توسط چه کسی پا گرفته و همچنین کتاب های فارسی نمایشگاه های عکاسی یا نقاشی که توسط ایرانیان برگزار شده حتی گفتمان های مسلط بر جامعه در هر دوران در نتیجه کتاب با اینکه در برگیرنده 164 متن مستقل به این معنی که میشه هر جای کتاب رو باز کرد و یک یادداشت رو خوند و دریافت و برداشت کامل از اون داشت در مسیر خودش کتاب ما رو با فرایندی آشنا میکنه که به فراورده ای در واقع میرسه یعنی به کلیتی میرسه با اجزاء به هم پیوسته و با هم در ارتباط کتاب با یادداشتی درباره غلام حسین سائدی نویسنده نام آشنای ایرانی باز میشه و با یادداشتی درباره گراردونولی ایران شناس نام آشنای ایتالیایی به پایان میرسه هر دو این یادداشت ها در سوگ این دو شخصیت نوشته شدن در سوگ درگذشت اینها وقتی این متن ها رو میخونیم در واقع هر دو این یادداشت ها در سوگ از دست رفتن امکان آفرینش بیشتر توسط این دو شخصیت در گستره فرهنگ ایران نوشته شدن و در فاصله این دو متن ما با روایت های متعددی روبرو میشیم درباره رویدادهای فرهنگی ایران و هر آنچه درباره ایران و درباره میراث فرهنگی ایران در یک گستره جغرافیایی و تاریخی گسترده همونطور که خانم افغانی گفتن نگاه آگاه و سنجیده و منصف دکتر یارشاتر تاریخ رو روایتی با مراحل به هم پیوسته و از هم اثرپذیرنده تعریف میکنه در یادداشت های دکتر یارشاتر ادبیات فارسی و فرهنگ ایران با شکست سلسله های پادشاهی شکست نمیخورند. سهم ایران و فرهنگ ایران در بالیدن فرهنگ و تمدن جهان دست کم گرفته نمیشه همچنان که سهم فرهنگ ها و تمدن های جهان در بالیدن ایران و ایرانی قدر گذارده میشه. حضور همنشینی و سازگاری اندیشه های گوناگون ایرانی جهانی در یادداشت ها به نظر من باستاب جهانبینی احسان یارشاتره که باز به نظر من برآمده از زندگی شخصی اوست دکتر احسان یارشاتر به معنای دقیق کلمات انسانی خود ساخته بود از دوران نوجوانی تا همیشه تمام دستاوردهای زندگی استثنائیش فقط و فقط به همت بلند خودش تکیه داشت یادداشت ها من فکر میکنم ما رو با اون انسانی آشنا میکنه که پشت شخصیت یارشاتر دانشگاهی، پژوهشگر، سردبیر دانشنامه ایرانیکا و نهادساز ایستاده. انسانی که به تمام جلوه های زندگی اهمیت میداد، خیلی هم جدی اهمیت میداد. از دوران دانشسرای مقدماتی به طور حرفه‌ای با گروهی کوهنوردی رو آغاز کرد، کمی بعد اسکی رو به طور حرفه‌ای یاد گرفت. رقص رو با معلم یاد گرفت و دو بار در مسابقات رقص والز جایزه نفر اول رو دریافت کرد. نقاشی مدرن رو مطالعه کرد شخصا به طوری که به طور حرفه‌ای مقالات علمی در بارش رو نوشت در نشریه سخن و این مقاله ها بعدها در کتابی در دو مجلد توسط انتشارات امیر کبیر چاپ شدند. موسیقی کلاسیک ایرانی و غربی رو به طور دقیق و علمی میشناخت و مجموعه های 
بزرگ و ارزنده ای از هر دو در منزل داشت و البته معاشرت با دوستان به شکل شگفت انگیزی با تمام این کارها اولویت زندگی دکتر یارشاتل بود و همچنین سفر سفر واقعا برای سفر نه فقط سفرهای کاری من فکر میکنم انسانی که بتونه به تمام جلوه های زندگی که ما گاهی اونها رو روزمره ها یا روزانه ها مینامیم اینطور اهمیت بده احتمالا به سری فراهم میشه در فکرش و در روانش که بتونه ارتباط و اثرگذاری و اثرپذیری فرهنگ های جهان رو بر هم دیگه دریافت کنه یعنی در واقع فرهنگ ها و تمدن ها رو با هم در اندرکنش یا تعامل ببینه برای آشنایی بیواسطه با متن کتاب من چون میدونم وقت کمه فقط از یکی از یاد داشتها دو پاراگراف انتخاب کردم قبل از اینکه اون رو با هم بخونیم دوست دارم بگم بیشترین موضوعی که در این کتاب بهش پرداخته شده زبانه مسئله زبانه من اصولا فکر میکنم مسئله محوری زندگی دکتر یار شاتر زبان بود دکتر یار شاتر زبان رو ظرف اندیشه یا صورت ملفوظ اندیشه تعریف میکرد عین جمله استاده زبان صورت ملفوظ اندیشه است و دکتر یار شاتر بارها در این یادداشت ها تعریف کرده توضیح داده که دلیلی که نام ایران رو در تاریخ حفظ کرده فرهنگ ایرانه و در دل اون به عنوان رکن اصلی اون زبان فارسی است و الگوی او هم یعنی اون زبان فارسی که دکتر یارشاتر الگوی خودش میدونست و بسیار قبول داشت زبانی بود که سعدی داشت نصر و شعر سعدی همیشه برای دکتر یارشاتر در واقع غیر قابل رقابت بود و پس از او نصر دکتر خانلری رو خیلی میپسندید من فکر میکنم کسی که هر کس که کتاب یاد داشته رو بخواد مطالعه کنه خوبه که به نصر به ساختار زبانی یادداشت‌ها توجه کنه که نصری محکم، خوشتراش و پرقوامه و در عین حال در دسترس و دور از هر نوع پیچیدگی به اصطلاح معروف سهل و ممتنع ماننده آنچه که سعدی می‌نوشت. دکتر یارشاتر در یکی از یادداشت‌های این کتاب نوشته ما دو گونه وطن داریم یکی آن که میان دریای مازندران و خلیج فارس قرار دارد با کوههای بلند و رودهای کم آب و صحراهای فراخ و ریگزارها و شورزارهای گرم و خشک و بیشه هایی که از چند قرن پیش باز رو به کاستی داشته است وطن دوم ما وطنی است که در آفاق ذهن ما خانه دارد وطنی است روشن و دلانگیز با رنگهای شفاف و دیدفری در آن رودکی چنگ برمیگیرد و سرود شادی و نغمه می و مستی می نوازد و فردوسی داستان دلاوری های قهرمانان ما را با آهنگی پهلوانی سر می دهد. سعدی آدمیت و عدل پروری و پوزش پذیری و خدمت به خلق و زیبایی آنها را در نظر ما ترسیم می کند و حافظ نوای عشق و آزادگی را به آهنگی لطیف در گوش ما زمزمه می کند. وطن خاکی ما پیوسته در معرض آفات است و وطن معنوی ما برعکس از گزند باد و باران و دست برد ویرانگر حوادث در امان درخشش آن را تیرگی اعمال ما زائل نمی کند گنجی است که از آن ماست آفتابی است که پیوسته می تابد زنده و پایدار است بر ماست که این وطن را زیباتر و تابناک تر کنیم این برگرفت از یادداشتی است با عنوان وطن دوگانه ما که در سال 1374 در ایران شناسی چاپ شده بود. اجازه میخوام صحبتم رو با دقیقه از صدای استاد به پایان ببرم. فایل شنیداری که با هم گوش میکنیم برگرفت از یک گفتگوی بلندی است که چند سال پیش من در محضر دکتر یارشاتر با او داشتم و چون اینن این جملات در کتاب بازتاب داده شده من فکر میکنم که اجازه داشته باشم که این رو با صدای خودشون پخش کنم و فقط یادآوری میکنم که تقریبا حدود 94 یا 95 ساله بودند استاد وقتی که این صحبت رو کردند خوش بردانه بیشتر کارهایی که من کردم تقریبا نزدیک به تمامش کارها بودی که من با عشق و علاقه کردم 
سپاسگزارم از وقتتون و من صفحه رو برمیگردونم به روما Thank you so much Roma Thank you and hello to everyone uh, I would like to start by thanking Professor Abbas Milani for organizing this session and inviting me to take part in it. My thanks also to uh, Ms. Roma Parhat and Mr. Franco Enrico of the Mogaddam program in Iranian studies for helping us to prepare for this uh, webinar. I wish it were um, in person and I could see uh, my colleagues and, and other friends. I would also like to extend my deep gratitude to Dr. Mandana Zandian um, for her admirable work in editing and overseeing the publication of Professor Yarshater's notes. Um, also to uh, Ms. Mahnaz Afghami, who suggested the idea in the first place and later led uh, the publishing uh, process um, of the book. Um, as was mentioned by my colleagues, uh, the Foundation for um, Iranian Studies um, and the Persian Heritage Foundation provided the logistical and financial support um, to bring the project um, to um, fruition. What I would like to do um, in the very short time um, that I have um, is to uh, give you three interrelated um, aspects of um, Dr. Yarshater's um, work. The first is the achievement or the achievements, um, uh, his achievements as a leading um, scholar of his generation. Very rightfully, uh, he has been referred to by many as the doyen of um, Iranian uh, studies. Uh, in the second part of my brief comments, um, I want to emphasize his role as the initiator of projects and creator of institutions with lasting impact um, on the promotion of Iranian culture um, and uh, civilization. And finally, in my, the concluding part of my uh, talk, I want to give a few examples taken from the Yad Dashta book to illustrate his frequent forays beyond strictly scholarly subjects to deal with topics relating to Iran's popular culture, politics, and Iranians' relations uh, with their neighbors and the rest of the world. So let me begin then with uh, Dr. Yarshater's work um, as a scholar. He received his doctorate in Persian literature under the direction of Ali Asghar Hikmat at Tehran University back in 19, 
1947. He continued his studies for the next five years at the University of London's School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS, receiving uh, an MA degree in 1953, upon which he returned to Iran and was appointed a lecturer in Persian language and literature in the Faculty of Letters at Tehran University. In his new position, he conducted extensive field research in villages of Northwest Iran and on Southern Tati dialects, a topic that he had worked on as a student when he was at SOAS under the guidance of the distinguished Iranologist, Walter Bruno Henning. This pioneering linguistic research served as, his, as the basis for his um, doctoral dissertation at the University of London, which he completed in, uh, I believe, in 1960. Invited um, as a visiting associate professor of Iranian studies at Columbia University in 1958, um, Dr. Yarshater spent the next two years at Columbia and returned to Iran um, again uh, in 1960, at which time this coincided with the retirement um, of his one-time mentor, um, Dr. Uh, Ibrahim Kurdavut, and Yarshater was appointed to Purdavut's chair um, in ancient Persian culture at Tehran University. He served in that role for only one year and he returned back to Columbia University, um, at which point he was appointed as a newly established, as the inaugural holder of the chair of um, Hakob Yevorkian um, in Iranian studies, a position that he held for nearly uh, three decades until his retirement from teaching in 1990. He served twice as the chair of the Department of Middle Eastern Languages and Cultures. And in 1967, he founded the Center for Iranian Studies, the first such academic center in North America devoted exclusively to the study of Iran. And he served as the director of that center uh, until 2014, which was the last year of his um, professional um, activities. By any standards, Professor Yarshater's tenure at Columbia University for nearly five and a half decades was an extraordinary example of scholarly achievements and productivity. Besides teaching and mentoring two generations of students on different aspects of Iran's cultural history, literature, and languages, he authored or edited 16 major books and over 100 scholarly articles and chapters. In addition to all of this, uh, that is his own writings, he helped initiate and oversaw a number of monumental publications in Iranian history, literature, and arts. To give you a few examples, an eight volume critical edition of Ferdowsi's Shahnameh edited with extensive notes by uh, Dr. Khaleghi Motlaq. An authoritative translation of Tariq Tabari, arguably the most um, important work in Islamic historiography in 40 volumes published in English, again under his um, supervision and initiated uh, by Dr. Yarshatir a two volume translation of Tariq Beihaqi, a, a truly impressive 20 volume history of Persian literature, which he initiated again and has continued under the very able editorship of uh, Dr. Uh, Mohsen Ashtiani. It continues and uh, I believe so far five of the 20 volumes have actually been published. Professor Yarshatir also um, played executive and leadership roles in a number of professional organizations worldwide, 
Um, I don't think we have time for me to go through all of this, but they cover a wide variety of um, institutions and um, professional associations, and which he either presided over or was a, an active member of, um, a distinguished member of um, over these years. So let me shift now to um, his work as an institution builder. Beyond his own pioneering research and publications, Yarshater created venues, projects, and institutions that sought to promote not only Iranians' knowledge of their own culture and history, but also their knowledge and understanding of other cultures and civilizations. In 1953, when he had just started his teaching position at Tehran University, he, embar he embarked on the first major project beyond the walls of academia and founded the Bongahe Tarjume Vanashri Ketab, the Institute for Translation and Publication of Books. The Institute's initial objective was to translate and publish foreign classics into Persian applying professional editing and publishing standards that were unprecedented um, in the country uh, up until then. Within a year, within a year after the establishment of this institute, um, he published five major translations. Um, one was Schiller's Wilhelm Tell, Another was a version of Tristan and Isot. Uh, yet another, Plato's five treatises, Turgenev's Fathers and Sons, and Confucius's um, uh, Analects. Uh, now, it's important that these works were translated by the likes of Muhammad Ali Jamal Zadeh, of Parviz Nater Khan Lari, of Mahmoud Sanoi, of Mehri Ari and Kazem Zadeh Iran Shah. These were obviously the most prominent uh, literary scholars um, of their time. The literary weight of these works, the prominence of their translators, the usual care exercised in checking, the unusual uh, care, I should say, that was exercised in checking the accuracy of the translations against the original, and the well-designed appearance of the books attracted the attention of discriminating readers and helped to raise the editing production standards for Iran. Over the years, a total of 71 major works of world literature were published in this foreign literature part of the publications of uh, the Institute for the Translation and Publication of, uh, of Books. Later, the Institute initiated additional book series in the mid 1950s. These included a series called the General Knowledge Series, Majmu'e Ma'arefe Umumi, and there were 138 titles in that series. Another series, Persian texts, Majmu'e Motun Farsi, with 48 titles. A series on Iranian studies, Majmu'e Iran Shenasi, with 68 titles. Several general and specialized bibliographies, including a massive multi volume bibliography of printed Persian books by Iraj Afshar and three additional series geared to younger groups. This was really remarkable. These included a children's collection, Majmu'e Kudakan, for children of four to seven years of age, an early youth collection, Majmu'e No Javanan, eight to 11 years of age, and a youth collection, Majmu'e Javanan, for ages 12 to 15. All together, 98 titles were published in the last three decades. With such remarkable output in both quality and quantity, the Institute made 
an unparalleled contribution to the cultural literacy of Iranians, young and old, over the course of its quarter century ex uh, existence from 1953 uh, to 1979. It continued its activities under the same name for an additional two years after the 1979 revolution before being dissolved by the Islamic um, Republic. In 1957, again, only a few years after he had uh, been appointed in, uh, to his position at Tehran University, with the help of Iraj Afshar and Abdul Hussein Zarin Koop and several other scholars, Yar Shatir founded Iran's first modern book society, Anjumani Kitab, and as its main organ, the first Persian language journal of book reviews, Rahnemai Kitab, with Iraj Afshar and Mustafa Mugarrabi as its associate editors. For over two and a half decades until its closure in 1979, Rahnemai Kitab served as the principal periodical for the review of new books on Persian literature, culture, history, as well as about advances in various fields of Iranian studies in Iran and abroad. It should go without saying that these enormous initiatives and achievements were not solely the work of Professor Yarshater. In fact, that he repeatedly acknowledged in his writings, but has often gone unmentioned in recounting his extraordinary achievements. He was fortunate to be part of, part of and worked closely with some of the most prominent members of Iran's cultural and academic elites during his years in, in Iran. These included Ali Akbar Siyasi, Sayyid Hassan Taghi Zadeh, Isa Sadiq, Muhammad Ali Jamal Zadeh, Mahmoud Sanei, Badiou Zaman Fouzantar, Ghulam Hussein Yousafi, um, Zaryab Khoui, Abdul Hussein Zarin Koub, Iraj Afshar, uh, Mujtaba Minovi, Mehri Ahi, Ahmad Birash, among many others. He also was supported by the Iranian government and the imperial court in nearly all of these projects. Now, the crowning achievement of Professor Yarshater's long and illustrious career was, of course, the massive Encyclopedia Iranica, whose editing, management, and sustenance as an institution occupied him for the last three and a half decades of his life. The current English version of Encyclopedia Iranica was brought out, uh, or it just brought out its um, um, 16th volume, completed its 16 volumes, um, and it is still in letter K. And let me mention that there are something like uh, 29 articles, for example, on Khorasan uh, in this uh, latest volume of uh, Encyclopedia Iranica. No matter what topic, one is interested in, you can be absolutely certain that the most authoritative and the most detailed um, work, scholarly um, work on the topic um, has been published or is being published um, in the Encyclopedia uh, Iranica. Now, I should say that um, the, uh, the Encyclopedia, uh, I remember reviewing it um, some 30 years ago uh, back in uh, 1990, I believe. And at that time, um, I said that in my judgment, this was the most significant contribution to the field of Iranian studies of that century, that is of the 20th century. Now, I think I can say with some, with some confidence that it may well turn out to be the most significant book in Iranian uh, uh, studies in the field of Iranian studies um, over two centuries, the 20th and the 21st uh, um, century. Um, it is being um, edited now um, at Columbia University at the newly uh, established 
Yar Shater Center for Iranian Studies at Columbia University, which was established with help of the Persian Heritage Foundation um, three years ago. Um, the encyclopedia is, is being edited by um, Dr. Elton Daniel, um, a very capable editor. Um, and, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, uh, it is currently in its 17th volume. And increasingly, it has become an online uh, publication with free access to everyone, which is really remarkable. One of very few um, encyclopedias that is accessible uh, to everyone uh, without paying any kind of uh, uh, fee. I may add with a great sense of disappointment here that an ongoing dispute between the Encyclopedia Iranica Foundation, the entity that was established by Professor Yarshater to ensure the continuity and financial support for the Encyclopedia um, on the one hand, and Columbia University Center for Young Studies um, that houses and supports the editorial staff of the project, uh, that this long uh, uh, and ongoing dispute um, has damaged uh, uh, the, uh, the publication um, of uh, at least the, the, you know, the flow of work uh, in the editing and publication um, of the encyclopedia. Um, it is a long drawn out legal battle, which is now being fought in the state of New York before the Board of Charities. And it could seriously limit, uh, has in my judgment limited uh, the progress of the encyclopedia and may well threaten um, its um, continuation. Uh, thankfully, um, so far, uh, the editorial staff has been able to continue bringing out the fascicles uh, uh, in the same manner as before, but, uh, uh, but uh, you know, the financial support for the project has diminished uh, significantly. Now, let me turn um, very briefly to the third aspect of Professor Yarshater's lifetime work, which, as I mentioned, went beyond academia's uh, ivory towers or, and his attempts in this manner to initiate significant publication series uh, and, uh, and really deal with matters that are of concern to the public uh, in general. Uh, this includes uh, engaging and delightfully readable reviews of and commentaries on a wide variety of uh, literary works from classical Persian literature to contemporary works of fiction, poetry, artwork. There are reviews in this book, uh, Yad Dashta, um, that have been written, uh, you know, bringing out the work, acknowledging the work of leading and young scholars of Iranian studies, both in Iran and abroad, um, and uh, putting their works in context and, uh, and praising uh, and encouraging them uh, to uh, continue. Uh, I think uh, I should stop there. Let me uh, simply end by reflecting on um, something that Dr. Yarshater said um, about, uh, I think, 10 or 15 years before um, he passed away. He said, uh, reflecting on his early uh, years, he said, no sooner had I settled in my job at the University of Tehran back in the 1950s, uh, that I was affected by a virus of which the main symptom is that it kills all your leisure time and keeps you running after minutes and seconds. Mm -hmm. I did not leave myself much time for attending to the more delectable aspects of life. But we all know, as I think uh, Dr. Zandion pointed out, uh, that this terrible virus never left uh, Professor Yarshater's body and was probably what kept him at his desk every day of the week until 
late evening hours. But as tenacious as the virus was, it was never able to subdue his indomitable zest for life and appreciation of the finer and more delectable things in, in life, such as the arts, Persian poetry, music, ballroom dancing, travel, and long walks with his earphones in Riverside Park, and above all, the companionship of his many friends and admirers. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you all for wonderful uh, presentations. Uh, we have some questions from the audience, but I think uh, we're keeping with our practice. Uh, I, as a, a moderator, will abuse my uh, position and uh, begin by asking each of you at least one question, and then we'll get to uh, audience uh, questions. Uh, I, I think uh, Ms. Aframi has left. Uh, is she there? Oh, yeah, I, yes. Uh, she referred to something uh, in passing that uh, Princess Ashraf was denied the chance to go to university. Uh, in fact, she was denied the chance to go to uh, high school with his uh, brother. Uh, he was, she was uh, scheduled to go in the last moment. Uh, the father decided, the father that was so famously in favor of women's rights, decided that the girl shouldn't go. So my question has always been to ask you, uh, how did you convince her? What kind of a process was it to get her to make this? Two million at that time was a major contribution. It was a big sum of money. It's probably about 20 million in today's uh, dollars. Uh, what was the process of the conversation? Uh, did she initiate it or did you suggest to her? To, I think that's a very important part of history for us to know. Uh Thanks, Abbas. Um, uh, I, I basically um, uh, went to her when, when the idea came you know, from uh, my husband, the group we were with, um, uh, which I mentioned, uh, Dr. Oreshi, but there was Dr. Etemad, uh, Sami, uh, uh, um, Ali Maraghi, uh, and others. Um, I, I thought, okay, what are we going to do in terms of resources? And at that time, of course, uh, the idea of philanthropy uh, was not really a common one among the Iranian community. Uh, and uh, actually, I want to uh, digress to say that this was also something that Dr. Yashater uh, taught the Iranian community, at least in diaspora, that if you want these services, these ideas, these uh, 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 events, uh, you have to contribute to it, you have to own it. And he was the first one to do it and he was very successful in it. But at the time there was no one, I only knew that she is interested in knowledge sharing, in research, in uh, education. She's passionate about it and very, very much regrets that she hasn't had the opportunity. So I just went to her and, and said, uh, you know, uh, could you help? And at that, that was the time when she was pushed uh, to help uh, politically, every minority group, every majority group or whatever wanted help. Uh, her family needed assistance and all of that. And uh, her community around her, there wasn't anyone who was that interested. Uh, I remember when I when the issue that I mentioned to you, the first issue of Iran Nomer, I took it to her after she agreed and we started the work. Uh, she was the only one uh, who was excited about it. Uh, she, uh, the people were, uh, even ambassadors who were there in the uh, dinner that uh, we were sharing, and uh, they were saying, what is Khyoban? You know, what is the point of this? She was the only one who was saying, this is interesting. I, I like this, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. He, she was just very curious, very interested and, and uh, regretted very much that she hadn't had. It. So she came up with it very easily. And actually, two million even then wasn't really all that much, I must say, <laughs> because, because when you put it and wanted to get money that to use, it would come to something like 200,000 a year. And without the uh, work of others and, and uh, 
sharing with museums and uh, uh, universities, it wouldn't have happened. But she did, whenever we asked her for extra, she came up with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so <clears throat> that, was, that was the story. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Yashater received the Beta Prize, uh, a prize that Beta Daria Barry has endowed at Stanford. And uh, one of the greatest talks in reception of the prize was given by Professor Yashata. This is on our website. I strongly urge everybody to go watch it. It's a five minute talk. This is towards uh, the end of his life. He's already very, uh, you know, uh, almost uh, unable to move. He went to the stage. We had a place for him. He sat down. And then came the time for him to talk and his hand was shaking. I wasn't sure that he could even deliver the talk. And then he gradually, gingerly got up and stood on his cane and delivered this epic acceptance speech. Almost everything that we talked about, about what drove him, uh, this passion that he had for ideas, this passion that he had for language was evident. I, I, you know, I, I still, uh, come close to crying every time I remember the heroism of his uh, effort. And that leads me to my question from Dr. Zandion. Dr. Zandion has not only written, uh, edited Yad Dashta, but she has written what is the most extensive uh, book on Yashater's views on almost everything. So could you tell us a little bit about that book, uh, Dr. Zandion? Of course, uh, that was, I think, the greatest honor in my life by now. Uh, it was a very, I don't even know how to put it in words, the experience, how it was maybe the best university I attended in my life, seriously. Not just about Iranian studies and about Dr. Yarshater's life story, about the daily life he would live. Because the way that we did that book was I traveled, I used to travel to New York on Friday night after hospital, like overnight. I was there Saturday morning, directly go to his office. We started working at 10 a.m. every Saturday. And until about 6 p.m. And I remember when, when we started it, Dr. Yarshater was 93 already. And when he, he actually brought this up that he wants to write his narration of his life and he wants it to be like as an interview. He doesn't want just to sit and write it as a memoir. And I remember I told him, of course it's an honor for anybody, but I'm sure there are people from your generation in Iranian studies that can do it much better than me because I don't really know so much. And he said, you know, people from my generation already has their conclusion about everything. So if they want to ask me questions, they already have their answers. I want to work with someone that can sit in front of me and really have questions from my life. I want to know what you want to know as the reader of my life, what you want to know, what is interesting for someone from your generation. And then we did it over almost a year and a half. We did the interview because of the travel matter. I couldn't do it like every week, of course. So, and then it took about a year for me to finish the book, to really transcribe it. We edited it maybe 100 times as everyone knows Dr. Yarshater. So, each part when it was transcribed and typed out, I, was, I read it for Dr. Yarshater, and then we edited it with, together, and then we went to the, ne the next section. But um, just something to a bit more entertaining about that is um, in the very first sessions, I was very concerned that Dr. Yarshater would get tired uh, because of his age. And a couple of times I said, do you want us to stop here? Do you want water? Do you want to have lunch? I can go and come back, something like that. And then after a few times I said that, Dr. Yashater once told me, you know, I'm fine. If you really need water or food or anything, you can go, <laughs> I wait for you. You can come back and we continue the work. <laughs> but if you are really concerned and you want to do something, I have suggestion. And that's it, after each session of interview, 
you recite a poem by Sadi for me. That would pay off. And that became a ritual all that one and a half year. We read Sadi a lot. And if that af even after that, when Dr. Yashater was in uh, California for the last two years of his life, uh, living with his niece, whenever I would go there, uh, we, we continued reciting Sa'di, especially Sa'di's Azaz for him. So that's, that was one of the best parts of our Fantastic. collaboration. Uh, Dr. Bayan Azizi, there are a couple of questions uh, about uh, Encyclopedia Ironica. You alluded to uh, the uh, problems. People are asking, uh, what, if anything, can it be, can be done to preserve the tradition that uh, Professor Yashater established in Ironica and continuing it? I, I fully agree with you. I think it is the single greatest uh, text in Iranian uh, introducing Iran to the uh, international community. Uh, and the idea that it will not continue because of some uh, you know, petty squabbles uh, is just tragic. So. Is there a way that the community can help and how can it help? Well, it's, it's a difficult question because at the moment the case is uh, before the Board of Charities uh, in the state of New York. So it is a legal um, fight that is going on um, to Put it very briefly, uh, Dr. Yashater created the Encyclopedia Iranica Foundation, um, whose principal uh, objective was to provide support um, for uh, the publication of Encyclopedia. Unfortunately, after Yashater left um, Columbia University to go to California, and a new editor um, took over. Uh, uh, a, a conflict developed between uh, the new editor, um, Dr. Elian, uh, Elton Daniel, and the Encyclopedia uh, Iranica Foundation. Um, and uh, this turned out to be um, a, a, a very difficult. Um, dispute between the two sides and the Encyclopedia Iranica Foundation essentially refused to um, provide financial support um, for the publication of Encyclopedia, even though that was the principal um, objective according to the constitution, to the bylaws of the foundation. Um, the, the matter then uh, became um, a dispute between this foundation, the Encyclopedia Iranica Foundation on the one hand, and Columbia University um, that holds copyrights to the Encyclopedia Iranica uh, publication. Um, the two sides are now involved in a legal battle um, in the state of New York. And really the only thing that can be done is to uh, try to persuade the Encyclopedia Iranica Foundation to deliver on its own mission um, to do what it was established to do, namely to provide um, support for um, the, uh, the Encyclopedia. Um, it is my hope that this can be resolved in a manner um, that would be, uh, you know, through discussions and negotiations, rather than dragging it out as a legal battle for the next three or four years. Now, in the meantime, I should say that the Persian Heritage Foundation has made a substantial contribution to this Yarshater Center um, for Iranian Studies at Columbia University. And that contribution um, has allowed the editorial staff of the encyclopedia to at least for the time being to continue editing and publishing the encyclopedia for which we should all be very grateful um, to um, Elton Daniel, um, to uh, 
Mohsen Ashtiani, uh, Dr. Mohsen Ashtiani, um, another editor, and to Ms. Maazami. Uh, so the work is going on, but with very limited resources and very limited uh, personnel. And as I mentioned before, I am worried um, that this may not uh, allow the encyclopedia to, uh, to bring to conclusion um, its mission um, over the next um, several years. I hope that won't happen, uh, but, uh, but I'm worried. Before I ask uh, Ms. Aframi to have some uh, closing comments, because she is the Boise Khev, Bonir Khev, she started this journal. <clears throat> uh, I want to say that uh, Professor Benu Azizi himself has had a great role in all of these years in promoting Iranian studies. He's one of the founding uh, founders of a journal that has endured now for, I think, maybe 50 years, one of the oldest journals of Iranian studies in English. Uh, he has had a remarkable role in introducing Shah Rukh Meskub to the English world, who is a prominent uh, Iranian scholar. We just uh, had a conference. Uh, uh, Professor Banu Azizi helped us organize the conference. The papers of that conference are now published. The Mage publisher has uh, published it. So, he himself deserves an enormous, uh, at least, note of gratitude from me, having watched him for 40 years do remarkable work in introducing Iran and uh, trying to infuse some sanity uh, in an era where oftentimes sanity is a hard commodity. So thank you for all you have done. Uh, Manas Kharoum, please. Uh, thank you, Abbas. Uh, for one thing, I want to thank you. You're sort of following in the footsteps of Dr. Yashatar yourself and what you've done in recent years, both in, in collecting uh, the archives, the extensive, extensive and fantastic archival works that exist in Iranian, Iranian studies. Without those, we would have a hard time to, to keep track of uh, what we have experienced what has been going on in the country. And I really admire your patience and your perseverance and your dedication to this, to this project. That is, I think, uh, one of the, uh, you know, something that this uh, Esson would have truly been uh, grateful for and, and uh, so, and we all should be and are. Uh, so, Thank you for that. And then also, I also want to thank uh, uh, Mandana. I was just uh, writing to her uh, a note saying, Mandana, when I go, I want you <laughs> to introduce me <laughs> because you are so eloquent and so generous in your praise. <laughs> and uh, so remember that on your list in uh, the future, <laughs> I hope far future. <laughs> you know. And uh, the others who helped, uh, Sa Dr. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Sajodi, Ali Sajodi was very helpful because uh, he was the one that has worked with us for something like 40 years, both with uh, Iran Nome and Dr. Matini and also with Iran Shanasi. And he has uh, been a, a really very, very helpful person in um, get, getting the Yad and, and and the journals uh, and everything else we publish. For instance, the publications of the foundation, for instance, the encyclopedia, the Reza Shah and so forth. So Sajjadi, I want to thank and Huray Avari also, who was part of the committee with which Ali helped a great deal with. And uh, uh, Hura also uh, worked with uh, uh, Dr. Yashater closely, almost her entire career outside of Iran. And so her, her work was very helpful too. And of course, as I said, Mandana, who, who was the major, I don't know how, now that I was thinking about uh, Ersan's uh, uh, suggestion to me, what do you mean you want to be a doctor? So you see, maybe I should have been that kind of doctor, you know, <laughs> to have the science and then at the same time have the literature and the arts. That is the perfect combination. So anyway, in terms of the Yad I want to just say that it's a precious book. Every time I pick it up and, and look at it, I discover something new. And that is because Ersan was terrific in the kind of, uh, as Ali said, organizational 
uh, development in terms of starting new and extensive uh, processes of research and publication, all of that is uh, pretty well uh, shared. What has not been shared is the side of him that Mandana mentioned in terms of his love of sports, his love of life, music, dance, whatever, that you know, wide range of experiences. And also the magnificent prose. I think one, another example of it is in, in the book that he uh, asked us to uh, republish, his Dost on Hai Shahname, which is for young kids. Uh, and we were working with, with uh, young children. And, and that book, the way that the, the simplicity and beauty of repeating those stories uh, in this kind of prose. And uh, Yadasha really reflects these this other sides of his life as connected to his uh, uh, artistry in terms of uh, prose writing. So I hope everybody would uh, has been encouraged by our uh, sides of uh, familiarity with it and uh, many more people will read it now that it's all in one place, so they don't have to go to different issues of Iran Nameh and Iran Shinasi to find them. Well, and, thank and you very much. Th th may I also thank Abbas uh, Roma uh, and um, Franco for, for their wonderful work and, and uh, the patience they've had with us. <laughs> I also want to thank them because everything <laughs> we do here, we do because of them and because of uh, all their remarkable work. And I think uh, the audience would agree that we had a truly remarkable panel about a very remarkable life. And we are indebted to all of you for sharing this, uh, these insights about a person who has had an enduring impact on Iran, Iran's history, uh, and Iran's culture. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, this was an unusually long uh, event for us, but we had so much to say, as you heard, and we are very grateful for all of you for staying. Thank you.